We get lots of telephone calls and queries every day from parents and others who are asking about their children who stutter and asking what they can do to help. And so what we would like to do is present to you with some of the tips that we would like to give to parents about how they can help their child who stutters. One of the most important things we want you to know is that there's no evidence that parents cause stuttering. Ways that you talk with your child haven't caused this problem, but there are lots of ideas and things that you can do to help your child. I think one of the first things that parents often ask us is, I know that my child should slow down, but I don't know how to help him to do that. Although we might be tempted to say to the child, slow down, take your time, maybe that's not going to help the child because he might get the message that what he's doing is wrong. We wouldn't want him to think that. Mm. He might also be just thrown off of what he's trying to say if someone interrupts him and says, slow down. And so what we can do as an adult talking to that child is just adopt a really unhurried manner ourselves. So appear very calm, if, even if maybe the child stuttering is making you feel anxious, trying to have a very calm demeanor and slowing down our own rate of talking with plenty of spaces between what we're saying, the pa using pauses to just give ourselves time to think, give the child time to process what we're saying, and really make the whole thing as unhurried as we can in order to give the child the message, there's no rush, I'm not rushing, you don't need to rush. So we know that children do need a lot of time to talk, mm -hmm. to think through what the answers to questions are or what sort of ideas they want to tell us about. So perhaps one of the better ideas, um, if you're trying to help your child to take that time, is to model a slower rate of talking as well. So the pace of life, yes, but also when you're talking to your child, have lots of pauses, take your time to reply, ask one question at a time, let them finish. I think one of the things that uh, seems to help parents slow down the pace overall is to think about uh, pausing more often actually, not saying too much at a time but leaving plenty of pauses in the conversation because that kind of slows the whole pace down yeah. and it allows children time to think and to work out what they're going to say in response to that. Even though you may feel rushed, if you can convey we're just going to take our time, we're not in a hurry, those kiddos are going to follow your lead. It's really natural for parents to ask their children questions and I think sometimes they think that's a really helpful thing to do because it's going to encourage them to talk which will help their language development. But maybe for the child who stutters that can be a bit of a difficult thing for them because being bombarded with questions sounds a bit like you're not going to have a lot of time to think about what you want to say in your response and maybe some of those questions could be quite hard to answer to because they're quite complicated questions. So maybe it's helpful for parents of children who stutter to think about the sorts of questions they're asking. I think sometimes we jump on one question with another question if the child's taking maybe a little bit longer than we might expect for them to come up with their response and so we think oh we better ask the question in a different way or maybe they didn't understand or they weren't listening and instead I think to just take that pause time and allow the child time to respond mm -hmm. versus thinking that it's you know I've got to jump in there and ask three more questions right behind it. Yeah sometimes we're tempted to ask those very open-ended questions like uh, how was your day today at school which leaves the child kind of thinking, oh, crumbs, which of, the, which of all those things that I've done today am I going to talk about first? And I think the other thing we sometimes do is we'll ask a whole series of questions without giving the child the time mm -hmm. to respond. So maybe if you do ask a question like, you know, what did you do today that was fun? You make sure you give them plenty of time to think about what they want to say and then to say it and make sure they've really finished before you come in with something else that you want to say. And sometimes too you can turn it around so that maybe what otherwise might have been a question turns into more of a comment. So mm -hmm. if you want to find out what they had for lunch today, then saying something like, uh, I, I had uh, 
soup for my lunch today. I wonder what you had. Might be an easier way for them to manage. Mm. Or sometimes you can just say, I had soup today. Yeah. And, and see, see what, what happens. happens. <laughs> <laughs> really listening to children is an important, and is a really important skill to use with all your children, actually. Uh, in fact, we're, as adults too, we like to be listened to. So really listening is a, a, a really important skill. And I think that one of the ways that we can indicate that we're really listening is particularly to stop for a moment what you're doing and give the child your eye contact. Show them that you're looking because that helps them to, to know that you are actually listening to what they say at that moment. I think also that if the child's talking to you and they're stuttering, you can get very focused on how they're talking and their stuttering and the struggling that might be going on. But actually, what might be most helpful for that child in terms of how you're responding is if you switch your focus into what they're saying and just really focus on listening to them and the words, their message they're trying to get across to you and responding to that. So if they're telling you something that's upsetting, you know, that you would reflect that in your face. If they're telling you something that's exciting, that you would show your pleasure in it too. So just listening to the content and not how they're saying it. And yes, with full listening and eye contact that shows that you're really interested and you really want to hear what they have to say. One of the things I often do will check in with myself and it helps me to think about making eye contact and smiling and be sure that I'm breathing. Um, and I find that to be really helpful in relaxing my overall posture. And I think then that it makes me appear more relaxed as well. And I think the other thing to say is that you can't listen the whole time and you especially can't do this high quality listening the whole time. And just because your child stutters, that doesn't mean that you have to try and listen. And you certainly shouldn't be pretending to listen, which is something we would all do. That it's okay to say to your child, I can't listen right now. I'm really busy. I've got to concentrate on the route I'm on right now, driving the car. And I, you have to hold on for a bit until I can listen to you. I think it's quite important to remember that actually we don't really take turns in families. It's very natural for people to interrupt each other and to overlap. And if your family isn't taking turns, that's just a very normal way of a family to be. But for the child who stutters, taking turns is going to be very helpful to them. So it's something you might need to think about putting in place to support their fluency. Well, one of the things that's true of very young children is that it's hard for them to think about what they want to say and be monitoring the conversation to know when it's their turn to jump in. So interrupting and talking over the top, top of each other is actually pretty natural. So I think for little children, if you can use an object, let's say you're at the dinner table, um, you can use a child's toy, a block or something like that, or maybe the salt shaker or something that when someone wants a turn, mm -hmm. they can ask to have that item mm -hmm. and whoever has it, it's their turn to talk. Within the family, it's quite straightforward to for a, a parent to say, now it's Lisa's turn or it's Francis' turn. So they are actually directing it quite openly. Uh, let him finish. As long as everybody in the household has equal turns and they know that they will get a turn eventually, you don't want the child who stutters to have more of the time because the other children would get a bit jealous about that. And I think the other thing is important to remember is that the child who stutters shouldn't get an unfairly large turn in relation to his brothers and sisters. I think sometimes parents are tempted with a child who is stuttering to feel that, that you know, they must be given the floor and uh, that would not really be teaching them very good uh, manners or to behave in a way that other people would accept too if they get the idea that they once they've got the floor they can take it for as long as they like. I'm sure that confidence uh, is one of the big issues that uh, parents worry about for the child who stutters so I think it should be one of the really top of the tips about how you build a child's confidence, how you uh, praise the child so that he feels good about himself. I don't mean focusing on the talking. I think this is much more about building up his strengths 
knowing that he's good at certain things, making sure that if he's done something well, you point it out to him. That was a lovely drawing. You really took your time to do that so nicely. I think, in addition, a child who feels listened to, properly really listened to, will feel good about himself as well. So the combination of praise, the five minutes, the listening skills, the taking your time, means that he's a special person. And one of the important things about uh, giving praise that means something is really for the child to be very sure about what it is that you would like to praise about what he's done. So if he's put his toys away, it's, it will be very important for him to know that. So I notice that you've put all your toys away in the box where they belong. And added to that, it's also nice to be able to say something about the child, what the child did then in a way which describes that. So perhaps to add something in like, that was really grown up of you, or that was really responsible of you, or that was really helpful of you. And being very specific in describing the behavior that you want to praise, mm -hmm. and then adding a label to it, things like you're very helpful, or you're so thoughtful, or I really appreciate you, you're really responsible, things like that, so that the child walks away and they think to themselves, hmm, I'm really helpful. Mm -hmm. Those are all ways that'll help build their confidence. Well, most of us lead pretty busy lives, and where we might think we have plenty of time with our children, actually, sometimes it's quite hard to find time just to spend some individual time with a child. And what we find with uh, the children who stutter is that many of them have responded really well to having a bit of one-on-one, -on -one, undivided attention, one parent with that child, and no interruptions. And that special time doesn't have to be very long either. It really can only, it only needs to be literally five minutes. Mm -hmm. And making sure that that time is away from everybody else. You've shut the door, you've turned the television off, you've turned the phone off. And so for that five minutes, that child really does get the sense that they have your complete and undivided attention. But that little oasis of time will have been very special for that child and is really helpful. So spending five minutes a day one-on-one -on -one with your child, with the phone off, the iPad off, the television off. Maybe you're playing during that time or you're just snuggled up and talking about the day or you're reading a book together. Something like that where that child has that undivided attention from you and you can focus on one aspect of your communication. So if you're reading a book together, maybe instead of asking lots of questions, you might only ask one question every three or four pages. Or maybe you're working on slowing your own rate of speech and just communicating in a less hurried, less pressured manner. Mm -hmm. But spending five minutes a day to do that does a couple of different things. It allows you to practice that one skill that you're trying out, and it also really helps your child feel attended to, and they're getting that special attention from you, and they feel really special. And so that's why we call it special time. And if you have other children, it might be really important to think about giving them a special time too, because what we wouldn't want to do is make it unfair. We want the child who stammers to be treated much the same as the other children in the family. Normal rules apply. They apply as much to your stuttering child as they do to any other child in the household. And that goes for other types of behavior as well. I think it's really helpful for parents to get the idea that if, if they want to know how to manage a child's behavior at any time, they should think to themselves, if this child wasn't stuttering, what would I do? And they think, well, I would tell him off, in which case that's exactly what you need to do for the child who's stuttering as much as it is for the other children in the house. I think, uh, I think it is important to think about the whole family when you're thinking about discipline. I think that parents do get very concerned that if they tell their child off, that might, that might make them more stressed, that they might stutter more. Um, I think that it's very important within a family that you keep the same rules for every child mm -hmm. within the family. It keeps the sibling competition and sibling rivalry down if kids perceive that they're all being treated equally. But the important thing is we want these 
kids to grow up to be responsible and polite and interact with each other um, in the same way we would any other child in the family. Mm -hmm. So the same rules apply. I think it's important to keep in mind that these things are helpful not just for the child who stutters but for all children. We're teaching them good communication skills, we're building their confidence and that's good for every child. Mm -hmm.